Rudolf Huss, the inhuman commander. We are all aware of the brutality and madness displayed by the Nazi regime and Hitler's dictatorship, seeing as they committed one of history's most horrific atrocities. They have set many new standards for brutality, from the gas chamber to training officers to become real monsters. People of that era heard these things on a daily basis and were powerless to stop them. But not everyone had the good fortune to feel secure. They managed to survive up until Adolf Hitler founded the SS in April 1925. The Holocaust, in which millions of people were victimized by the Nazis during the Second World War, is one of the most significant crimes in history. Auschwitz was one of the largest extermination centers and concentration camps used by the Germans to eradicate Jews from Europe. Over a period of years, the Nazi regime would brutally murder over a million people. Rudolf Huss served as the commandant and commander of Auschwitz. He oversaw mass murder turning the camp into a massive killing facility using gas chambers and other methods. Auschwitz was chosen as the site of the final solution because Huss was fixated on finding the best way to kill a large number of people via mass murder. It was chosen due to its proximity to the railroad and Huss would be responsible for the murder of over one million Jews and other prisoners. Huss would devise the infamous gas chamber techniques himself, but he was apprehended. Although he always said that he hated watching people get killed, his deeds showed something else. He had some problems with killing little children and women, but he had claimed that it was the senior officers who forced him to do so by convincing him that it was for a far more significant cause. Hus was born into a devout Catholic family in Baden-Baden. He shared a home with his father, Franz Zeverhus, and his mother, Lina. The only son and eldest of three children, Hus was also the most senior. On December 11, 1901, he was baptized Rudolf Franz Ferdinand. Before starting elementary school, he was an isolated youngster with no friends his own age. All of his relationships were with adults. In his autobiography, he asserted that as a young man, Romanes briefly kidnapped him. His father, a retired army officer who had served in German East Africa, ran a tea and coffee shop. He decided that his son would become a priest and raised him according to strict religious principles and military discipline. As a result, Hus developed a nearly passionate belief in the importance of duty in leading a moral life. His early years were marked by a constant emphasis on sin, guilt, and the requirement for performing atonement. Hus briefly worked in a military hospital when World War I started. At age 14, he was accepted into the German Army's 21st Regiment of Dragoons, which was his father and grandfather's old regiment. He participated in battles with the Ottoman Sixth Army at age 15 in Palestine, Kut el Amara, and Baghdad. The Armenian genocide, which Hus was present for at the appropriate time and location but did not mention in his memoirs, could have been witnessed by Hus. He attained the rank of Feldwebel while stationed in Turkey, making him the army's youngest non-commissioned officer at the age of 17. He received the Iron Crescent, the Iron Cross, first and second class, as well as other decorations, despite being wounded three times and suffering from malaria. Additionally, Hus briefly oversaw a cavalry squad. He and a few others decided to attempt to ride all the way back home when word of the armistice reached Damascus where they were at the time. Instead of waiting for the British to arrest them as prisoners of war, they had to travel through enemy territory in Romania to return to Bavaria, but they did so. Hus finished his secondary education after the November 11, 1918 armistice and soon joined some of the newly formed nationalist paramilitary organizations, first the East Prussian Volunteer Corps and then the Free Corps Rosbach in the Baltic region, Silesia and the Ruhr. During the Silesian uprisings against the Germans and the French occupation of the Ruhr, Hus took part in armed terror attacks on French and Polish citizens, as well as on Polish citizens. After hearing Adolf Hitler's speech in Munich, he renounced his Catholic Church affiliation and joined the Nazi party in 1922, member number 3240. On May 31, 1923, in Mecklenburg, on the orders of farm manager Martin Bormann, who would later become Hitler's personal secretary, Hus and the members of the Free Corps attacked and murdered local teacher Walter Kadal. 
Cadao is thought to have informed the French occupation authorities about sabotage operations being carried out against French supply lines by Hus' fellow Nazi paramilitary soldier Albert Leo Schlageter. After Schlageter was detained and put to death on May 26, 1923, Hus and a number of his cohorts, including Bormann, extracted retribution on Cadao. Hus was arrested and put on trial as the ringleader in 1923 after one of the murderers confessed to a local newspaper. Hus accepted responsibility as the group's leader, though he later asserted that another man was in charge. He was found guilty and given a 10-year term in the Brandenburg prison, while Bormann was given a one-year period. Hus was set free in July 1928 as part of a general amnesty and joined the Artemann League, a movement that advocated a farm-based way of life and opposed urbanization. He met Hedwig Hensel in the Artemann League and the two were wed on August 17, 1929. Hedwig Hensel passed away in 1989. They had five children between 1930 and 1943, two sons and three daughters. Hus enlisted in the SS on April the 1st in response to Himmler's persuasive call to arms and transferred to the Death's Head units the following year. He grew to admire Himmler to such an extent that he regarded everything he said as the gospel and he chose to put his portrait in his office rather than Hitler's. Hus was given the position of block leader at the Dachau concentration camp in December 1934. Theodor Eicher, the SS Brigadier General, who reorganized the Nazi concentration camp system, served as his mentor at Dachau. Hus received an SS captain promotion in 1938 and was appointed Hermann Baranowski's adjutant in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. There he oversaw the firing squad that executed August Dickmann, a Jehovah's Witness and the first conscientious objector to be put to death since the start of the war on the orders of Himmler on September 15, 1939. Hus fired the decisive shot with his pistol. After the invasion of Poland in 1939, he enlisted in the Waffen SS. Hus performed admirably in that role, and his superiors recommended him for a promotion and increased responsibility. Throughout his tour of duty there, he was managing the prisoner's property. In charge of the protective custody camp at Sachsenhausen on January 18, 1940, Hoss gave the order for all prisoners not assigned to work details to stand outdoors in minus 26 degree temperatures. Most of the prisoners lacked coats. He had previously served at Dachau and Sachsenhausen concentration camps. His report led to the creation of Auschwitz and his appointment as its commandant. The center was built around an old Austrian army barracks near Auschwitzum. At its peak, Auschwitz comprised three separate facilities, Auschwitz I, Auschwitz II Birkenau, and Auschwitz III Monowitz. These included many satellite subcamps, and the camp was built on about 8,000 hectares, 20,000 acres, that all inhabitants had cleared. Monowitz was the slave labor camp for the IG Farben Industry AG, and later other German industries. Most notorious were Block 11, and the courtyard between Blocks 10 and 11 at Auschwitz I, the original camp. Nazi brutality was hidden from view behind high stone walls and a large wooden gate. Unclosed and bound, a condemned prisoner was led from Block 11 to the death wall at the rear of the courtyard. The prisoner was then quietly killed by a member of the political department using a pistol with a small caliber. Puss also used the standing rooms in Block 11 as a form of punishment he repeatedly sentenced 10 random inmates to death by starvation in a Block 11 cell as retaliation for one of the prisoners escaping. Auschwitz was chosen by Heinrich Himmler for the extermination of Europe's Jews on account of its easy access by rail and also because the extensive site offered space for measures ensuring isolation. SS Gruppenführer Erich Hoss told his wife about the camp's purpose only at the end of 1942 since she already knew about it from Fritz Bracht. Adolf Eichmann would be receiving operational orders from Himmler, who arrived at Auschwitz four weeks later. Huss said that no one was allowed to speak about the matter with any person. Auschwitz's four gas chambers and crematoria were built to handle the sheer volume of victims. Inmates were stripped naked, stripped of all hair, sprayed with disinfectant and given tattoos before being sent to the gas chambers. Only those deemed fit for slave labor would live 
Auschwitz commander Adolf Huss had an affair with a political prisoner in 1942, which may have led to his recall from the Auschwitz command in 1943. He experimented with various gassing methods, including using hydrogen cyanide and Zyklon B. He told Adolf Eichmann that he used cotton filters soaked in sulfuric acid for early killings. We knew when people were dead because they stopped screaming, he told him at the Nuremberg trials. In May and June 1944, almost 10,000 Jews were being gassed per day with the gas chambers maxing out capacity. Husser's final posting was at the Ravensbrück concentration camp, where he oversaw the death of more than 2,000 female prisoners. Himmler counseled Huss to blend in with the Kriegsmarine personnel in the war's closing stages. He avoided capture for almost a year. He pretended to be a gardener and went by the name Franz Lang when he was apprehended on March 11, 1946 in Gottropol, Germany. Huss's daughter claims that her mother revealed his whereabouts in order to shield her son Klaus from British soldiers who were alleged to be badly beating him. Hans Alexander, a German Jew from Berlin who had to flee to England with his family during the rise of Nazi Germany, was a member of the British force that captured Hus. Hans Alexander later rose to the rank of captain in the British Army. Alexander claimed that Hus attempted to bite into a cyanide pill after being discovered. Hus initially denied his identity, but Alexander eventually asked him to take off his wedding ring so that he could look at it after noticing it. Hus objected, claiming that Alexander had threatened to cut off his finger before it became stuck. Nevertheless, Hus handed over the ring, which Alexander quickly realized was inscribed with Rudolf and Hedwig's names. Rudolf Hus gave evidence at the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg on April 15, 1946. He was called as a defense witness by Ernst Kaltenbrunner's lawyer, Kurt Kaufmann. The transcript of his testimony was later used as evidence during the Pole trial. Affidavits that he made while imprisoned were also used at the Iverben and IG Farben trials. His trial ran from March 11th to March 29th, 1947. On April 2nd, 1947, Huss received a death by hanging sentence. On April 16th, the verdict was executed, close to the crematorium for the former Auschwitz I concentration camp. He was executed at the camp's Gestapo location by hanging from a short drop gallows built for that purpose. Hus wrote his autobiography while awaiting execution. It was published first in Polish in 1951 and then in German in 1956. It consists of two parts, one about his own life and the second about the other SS men he had become acquainted with. Hus blamed Hitler and Himmler for using their powers wrongly and even criminally. <laughs>